Hello everyone, Fuzzy Bear Burian here with a full rapid fire beginner's guide to Katana Kami, A Way of the Samurai Story. Now Katana Kami is a pretty tricky multi-layered game to get a handle on at first, but once you do, it's actually quite straightforward and it is a lot of fun to play. In this guide, I'll show you how to play the core gameplay loop in the most efficient manner possible. There's dozens of tips here that will help you complete your first dungeon crawl, get your swordsmith business booming, and ultimately get you geared up for the best possible runs. Be aware, there are spoilers in this guide though. I'll be showing clips from the full core gameplay loop, including the dungeon bosses. Katana Kami is a roguelike dungeon crawler where to have success at the game you have to complete the same gameplay loop over and over, which is essentially playing through the same dungeon repeatedly and managing your sword smithy with the money, swords and materials you get from your runs. There's really no way around showing spoilers from that gameplay loop in order to show you how to play that gameplay loop. If you don't want spoilers, I recommend you play through on your own terms without a guide first, see the dungeon from start to finish for the first time by yourself, and then come back to this guide later on. You might even decide to do that and then start a new game once you've played through the dungeon at least once. This guide will help you with that too, even if you've got some experience in the game and are quite advanced. I started two new games before I learned all this stuff that's in this guide, so it's okay to start over once you know how the game works better, as progress will likely be faster if you do, even when you start over. Now let's get into the tips. Once you complete the initial tutorial dungeon, head into the smithy and go to the closet. You'll find three accessories in the closet. You can only uh, put on two accessories at the start of the game, so choose the hat and the Itachi. That will give you more health, vitality and more XP when you're in the dungeon. You equip them here in the accessories area. Just double click on them for each slot. Once they're equipped, the perks will apply. If you don't have those accessories in your closet, it just means you'll have to save some coin up to buy them from a vendor. The vendors have those three, same three accessories that are in your closet right from the start of the game, but you will need to save for them. When you meet the deck collector for the first time, choose wait instead of paying him. What we want to do is save all our coin for upgrading our gear early. He'll make you exempt this one time, so don't worry about not paying him. After visiting the dungeon area twice and seeing the debt collector, you'll be carrying some swords. Put them all into the smithy's inventory. In fact, make that a habit every time you're at Ippon Matsu so that your personal inventory is always free. If there are any swords you personally want to keep, you can put them into your personal storage in your room instead. Those blunt swords and fake swords are the worst kind of swords. We don't want to give those to anyone or have them in our inventory, but for now, we'll just leave them there and worry about them later. Instead, head to your storage. You should find a bunch of decent swords already in there. Pick three of them. They're all good and have different movesets once upgraded, but for now, pick the ones with the highest sharpness, shown under the green icon. Cabra Reborn, Dojigiri Yasutsuna, and Bison Asafuni Nagamitsu are pretty decent. My favorite is Dojigiri Yasutsuna, as it has a great grappling skill when leveled up, but they're all good, so pick whatever three you want and equip them. You can carry all three weapons at once and cycle between them in game, so just make sure each of your three weapon slots has one of the weapons you just took out of storage. Actual sword in your hand out of the three is marked with a green EQ icon in the top right corner of the weapon slot, so you can see Cabra Reborn is the weapon in my hand. Next thing to know early is you have to keep Dejima from getting stressed. Do that by talking to him and giving him stuff he likes. Look on the bottom of the screen at the effect of the item you want to give him. Don't ever give him anything with a red negative effect. He likes mushrooms and daikons, so just give him as many of those as you can as they have blue effects. He doesn't actually like some blue effects, he considers them trash, but mushrooms and daikons are pretty good. You also need to increase Dejima's smithing skill level. This takes a long time as it relies on you getting materials to enhance your swords, but you should be able to enhance a sword fairly early on though. I recommend enhancing sharpness first because that will help you kill enemies faster. Pick one sword as your main, at least for now, and enhance that one as high as you can. The number of times you can enhance is determined by how many materials you have obtained, and since the dungeon is procedural, it will vary run to run. Just remember, every time you go to the dungeon, make collecting materials a priority. The materials you get by smashing things and just picking out what drops, or they can drop from enemies you kill as well. As your sword levels up, you'll be able to put titles on it. Titles are perks that add to the sword's effectiveness. You need title books to apply titles, and you can find those in the dungeon, and you can buy them from some vendors. But don't worry about putting titles on just yet, even if you can, because the higher your sword level goes, the better the title is that you can apply to it, so just hold out and wait for that. Swords wear down with use. Keep your eye on the sword-shaped bar on the bottom of the screen. If the bar runs out, the sword will break. 
Look for sharpening blocks in each level to prevent that from happening. Use swords picked up from enemies to repair your own. You can also find whetstones to do the same thing, though you're better off selling those for coin as sharpening blocks are everywhere. If you do break your sword, it will be useless until you find a sword of the exact same name that you can use to repair it. But if you constantly use sharpening blocks, you'll never have to worry. If a sword does get close to breaking though, and you're not near a sharpening block, just switch out to one of your other swords and use that instead. Katana Kami's combat has more depth than it first appears, way too much for this guide. However, I'll give two tips that I think will help you with your combat a lot. When fighting, hold block, and when an enemy attacks, press dodge while still holding block down. That will parry. On an Xbox controller, hold the right button down and press B. That's what I am doing to parry this golem. A second move is to hold block and press heavy attack to grapple, which is the Y button on an Xbox controller. Grappling like that won't work on golems, but it works on most other enemies. All swords have unique movesets for their grapple attack, so the move you get will vary sword to sword. But if you master those two block counters, uh, you'll find you can handle any enemy in the game. The big circle on the bottom left of the screen has three sections. That's your katana time charge. Each section gets charged with orbs gained by defeating enemies. If you use light mushrooms, they'll give you a buff that gets you more orbs. Light mushrooms are everywhere, so I say use them all the time. As each section of your katana time meter charges, you'll hear a noise to alert you that it is charged. The goal is to have three fully charged katana times on all three weapons. So, when katana time is charged on one weapon, switch out and start using a different weapon to build its katana time up. Once you have three fully charged katana times, keep them in tow and you'll pretty much guarantee yourself that you'll never die to a boss or an overwhelming mob. Once you do manage to get all three of your weapons fully charged with katana time, switch to the weapon you want to level up the most. Remember that leveling weapons is important because once a sword gets to its maximum level, you'll then be able to apply the best titles to make it even more powerful. As you progress through dungeons and take portals, mystery descents and danger descents, where you end up will be random. Dungeons are also procedurally generated, so you can't always predict what you'll walk into next. Save all of your katana times for bosses if you can, or for moments like this where you find yourself surrounded and just want to make sure you don't die. Later in the game, if you apply a 60% orb generating title to your weapon and are conscious to use light mushrooms all the time, you'll get your katana time back fast anyway. It's better to use it and not die than it is to hold onto it and die. Early on you'll meet Suzu, and when you do, sword orders will become something you must manage each time you return to Ipamatsu. The biggest source of coin in the game comes from these sword orders. There are two ways to get them, one is to increase faction satisfaction with the smithy, and the other is to create tension and conflict that drives up the demand for swords. To begin with though, I recommend focusing only on raising satisfaction. To achieve high satisfaction, never ever send fake swords, blunt swords, or swords with negative status effects. Always send the highest quality swords you have. And also make sure that when you fulfill these orders, you fulfill them to 150% service rate. This will increase faction satisfaction with the smithy, which is essential to achieving the booming business goal where everyone rushes in to buy a ton of swords. With a booming business, so long as you've been putting as many swords as you can find into the smithy's inventory so that he can fulfill all of the demand, you'll make a ton of coin really fast. Note that 150% service rate is the cap, so just remove any excess swords you've added as sending those is a waste. I mentioned driving tension and conflict as the other major method of earning coin. You can start tension by creating an imbalance of the numbers next to those sword icons. Do that by sending more swords to one faction than you send to the other two, and by sending that one faction better quality swords than you send the other two. You can also start fights around town to really ramp it up, but I recommend not doing any of that early on. Tension between factions will slowly creep up of its own accord over time because the number of swords you send out to fulfill orders will always vary. The imbalance will happen naturally if you don't force it, only it will just happen a little slower. That gives you time to focus on raising the green smithy tension bar, which is the gauge for how satisfied with the smithy each faction is. Delivering orders the way I just showed is the way to raise it. By not forcing tension early, you'll be able to fully capitalize on it when it finally happens later, because by that time, you'll have a ton of swords ready to supply to the increased orders you'll get. In the meantime, business will be booming and you'll already be working hard to keep enough swords in stock for that. Either way, you'll be making plenty of coin. 
be sure to talk to NPCs all the time as well. Some of the stuff they say is just like random, but other stuff can actually affect what happens in the game. And I said it before, but I'm going to repeat it again because it's important. If you're in town and you have swords in your personal inventory, go to the smithy and put them into the smithy's inventory. You have to make sure you build his inventory up with plenty of swords so he has enough swords to supply people when business gets booming. And while you're storing things, uh, head over to your closet and there you can store any items you have that aren't swords, which is a good idea because later on you'll have ready access to items to give as gifts, to give to Dejima to reduce his stress level, or to sell later on for coin. You can hit vending machines wherever you find them to level up your weapons pretty fast, and also if you destroy them, they might drop you a small reward. If you find yourself afflicted with a status ailment but don't know what it is, just go into the protagonist info screen and access the status ailment list. You can see both negative and positive ailments here, and while in the list, the game will be paused, so take your time. Also visible from the protagonist info screen are passive status perks. You can see there the stance trait shows the perk on your currently equipped sword or perks if you have more than one. Sensei's lessons shows the perk you'll get if you equip a sword with the stance that matches the perk offered. In this example, if you equip a side stance sword, you'll get 50% extra XP gain. Sensei's lessons change with each day night cycle, so keep your eye on it before entering a dungeon and try to equip the appropriate sword to take advantage of the perk shown. Keep your eye out for these statues that have red cloths draped on them. If you prostrate in front of one, it will likely drop a sword crafting material for you. Your item bag will fill up fast. Take the time to discard items in your bag that are lower quality or of a lower coin value than what is lying on the ground. Always discard swords or items to create space to pick up better versions. You want the best swords you can get for transferring to the smithy's inventory later, and you want the best items you can get for selling for coin. In this example, title books are a must grab, and it's safe to discard any blunt sword to create room for it. Later in the guide I'll show you how to increase your item bag space, but early on in the game you have no choice but to take the time to compare and swap out items this way. If you sheathe your sword, the game will convert vitality from your yellow bar to the green health bar. If you use a mushroom while at full health, the mushroom will increase your maximum health. Your sheathed sword will then take vitality to fill your health bar back to full again. Now you can repeat this loop for as many mushrooms as you have in your inventory and for your entire playthrough of the dungeon. So basically if you do this with every mushroom you find throughout the dungeon, your health bar will become huge. Be very careful though, if your vitality drops to zero, the death god will spawn. He's probably the most powerful enemy in the game and can kill you in seconds. If he shows up, you'll have to parry him to defeat him unless you have an invincibility medicine handy. He has special gear that only he carries though, so if you do kill him, expect one of his weapons and maybe something else rare as a reward. If you see the Nekamata enemy, immediately look for the largest Nekamata and target it. The largest Nekamatas are summoners, and they will continue to summon smaller, more aggressive Nekamatas to attack you. Kill the summoner, or you might find yourself overwhelmed. If you pray at these pink statues, you'll get a random reward. It could be 100 coin, it could kill every enemy in the entire area, or it could put a negative status effect on you. You just have to wait and see. Get far enough into a dungeon and you'll come across a mysterious swordsmith. You can encounter him halfway through the dungeon and always after floor 19, just before the final boss at floor 20. When you encounter him midway through, first make sure your equipped swords are all fully repaired and then use him to smelt all of the swords in your inventory. This will give you a ton of materials and free up your inventory to pick up more swords. You can always keep some swords in your inventory if you're really worried that you might need them later, or if you want to add them to the smithy's inventory later on too. But generally, swords drop from enemies all the time, and smelting them all at this point of the dungeon is more helpful. Especially since it is possible you'll find the mysterious smithy before you unlock Dejima's ability to craft and smelt swords. Meaning smelting here will give you more materials than you can otherwise get any other way. Next, use the smithy shop to sell as much of the items in your inventory as you can to make coin while freeing up more inventory space. Just remember you can only carry 999 coin until later in the game. Sell for more than that and you won't be able to carry the coin. However, 
He also sells title books, so if at this point you can sell stuff for more coin than you can carry, buy title books as they are the most important thing he sells. You'll certainly use them later and it won't be a waste of coin. You can see here that after selling a bunch of my items, a coin purse has dropped on the ground because I was unable to carry the extra coin. Later in the game, you can get items to add to your accessories to increase your coin carrying capacity, but early in the game, you just won't have access to them. So, as I just suggested, here I go into the smithy shop to buy title books, which will reduce the amount of coin I'm carrying and free up my inventory to pick up that coin purse. However, I'm only halfway through the dungeon and you can see my coin carrying capacity is still almost at its limit. So again, buying a couple more title books will free up some more room so I can pick up coins as I progress through the rest of the dungeon. Just remember you're going to need a ton of title books later on, so don't hesitate to grab a few now. There are other books you'll find too, like appraisal books, exposure books and secret arts books. You'll be tempted to use them for their respective benefits, but don't. Keep them all and sell them as they are worth a lot more in coin than the benefits they give you when you use them. Just don't accidentally sell title books as they are worth more to use than they are in coin. As far as items to sell goes, gold figures and secret medicines are worth a bunch. Definitely save them for selling once you obtain coin carrying upgrades later in the game. Also later in the game when coin isn't much of an issue, you can give the gold figure as a gift. It's definitely the best gift you can give. If you're feeling confident, you can attack the mysterious swordsmith. If you kill him, he'll drop the rare Setsugeka Katana. Don't get excited though, the weapon isn't anything special. It's definitely not worth taking the risk to try and kill him in your first dungeon run as you can easily ruin your run. Try killing him in a later dungeon run instead. If you have a status applied, like I have poison here, going to the next floor will immediately remove it, so no need to try to cure the status or wait it out. Chaining parries is the fastest way to beat enemies. If you parry an enemy and kill them with the follow-up strike, you might see another enemy nearby light up as if you had just parried them also. When you see that, immediately press your attack button again and you will launch a strike at that enemy wherever they are. The Poverty God is an annoying enemy that runs at you and rams you to steal your money. If he successfully bangs into you, he'll try to run off. If you're not fast enough to kill him, you will lose that money. You can avoid having your money stolen by dodging him when he runs at you. That way you can just safely kill him without worrying about losing coins. If you're in the middle of a fight and worried about breaking your sword and there's a sharpening block nearby, you can still use it. Accessing the block will pause the game, allowing you to repair your sword before getting back into the action. If you see the fortune god, act fast and try to kill him. He won't try to attack you back, but he will try to run away, and he's very quick. He's also very tanky. You probably won't be able to kill him first up until you've leveled up your weapon some, though a katana time will make short work of him. But if you do manage to kill him, you'll get a ton of coin as a reward. You can yell to scare or interrupt enemies. On an Xbox controller, yelling is done by holding right button for block and pressing A. Yelling is actually very useful. Here it scares this retriever into running away and eventually it gets disoriented and can't do anything. Against some enemies, yelling will freeze them in fear or it'll make them fall over. It can even deflect arrows if timed right. Or it will do absolutely nothing, depending on the enemy and your timing. Try yelling to see what happens. Rejuvenating water cures all status ailments. Most status ailments are over quickly and won't bother you, but some, like blindness, last a lot longer and can make things more difficult. Save a rejuvenating water for the more annoying status ailments like blindness, and if you don't end up using it at all, you can just sell it later on for more coin. Earlier I said the goal was to have katana time ready on all three of your weapons when you encounter a boss. Here I only had katana time ready on two weapons. I switch out from the weapon that doesn't have katana time to one that does and activate it. Activating Katana Time when near an enemy will hit it with an activation blast that does damage. Once Katana Time runs out, if the boss isn't dead, I create some space and switch to my second sword with Katana Time active on that. It works here because Waira is the weakest of the first two bosses. In your first dungeon crawl, the last boss at floor 20 will likely take all three Katana Times. Later in the game when you have a maxed out sword with multiple title perks, one will likely be enough. 
Just remember, if for some reason you're out of katana time and a boss is still alive, bosses can be parried like any other enemy. Parry them to follow up with the most damage you can deliver. After you beat the final dungeon boss, you'll encounter the mysterious man. You don't have to fight this guy, you can just chat and leave. However, killing him will see him drop one of two of the best weapons you can get in the game at this point. He's tough to beat though, but not so hard if you continue to hold block and press heavy attack to grapple him down and then get a few hits in while he's down. If you repeat that over and over, you should be able to kill him on your first try. On death, you'll either get the Aseaman Sword or the even rarer Sekishin Shoren Ken. Either will drop with random stats. Each time you run the dungeon, you'll be farming this guy in the hope that you'll get some great random stats on what will likely be your best sword, at least for now. Once back home, you'll notice money in your safe has gone up while Dejim has been selling swords and, if you fulfilled orders with high quality swords to 150% service delivery rate, you should also see a bunch of new shops have opened up. First though, make it a habit to bank your coin into your safe and to transfer all of the swords you picked up in the dungeon into the smithy's inventory. Next, if you chat to Dejima, he's going to tell you something seemingly bad. He'll say business is awful and at the rate we're going we won't be able to pay off his debt. He's wrong of course. We already have the next two debt repayments covered and we're going to be raining in coin with a booming business soon. Tension will rise naturally without our help but we can always force tension up later. Right now, we want to get as many high quality swords into Dejima's inventory as we can to make sure we can fulfill all orders and keep hitting the booming business goal, while building our stock ready to have plenty to supply the inevitable future faction war that will come. So don't worry about tension for now. Instead, do the routine stuff you already know how to do. Go to your account book and fulfill orders, make sure your delivery is 150% and it's all your best quality swords. While you're there, also send gifts to the factions, making sure you send the best gifts you can, which are usually items that sell for the most amount of coin. Then head over to the bushes and find Dechi and send a gift to Nanami. Again, send the best gift you have to offer. Be aware though, the types of gifts you send Nanami may have a material impact on Nanami later on in the game. I'm not saying anything else on that, other than make sure you send more useful gifts than edible gifts, though any valuable gift will still do. We've already seen the three new shops that have popped up. Each shop represents a faction and offers different items. We have one shop from each faction because the Smithy Tension aka Satisfaction Meter is okay for all of them. Each shop will only be selling their base merchandise though and won't add extra items until the Smithy Tension Satisfaction Meter goes even higher. But that's okay because they have some stuff we want right now. The first is the most expensive, but the most important. Head to the Kurofu shop and choose the Expand Facilities option. You'll want to buy the Fashion Expansion one slot. It costs 5,000 coin, which is a lot, but you should have that by now. Upon buying it, your accessories will be extended from the two slot limit to three. You'll now head started. to the Akadana You'll shop. See. They've got a pipe accessory, which helps you gain coin faster. They've got a cage, which helps you carry more items. And they've got a medicine case, which helps you carry more items and more coin. Buy at least two of each of these items. Then basically try to juggle which ones you have equipped to make the most of the perks these items have as and when you need them. I personally recommend equipping all pipes early on in the dungeon to make the most of your coin earning early on and then swap out to the cages when your inventory gets maxed out or use a medicine case if your coins are getting too high as well. If you go to the furnace and select the craft sword option, you might be wondering why it tells you it cannot be used currently. Don't worry about that right now, the ability to craft swords will unlock soon enough. For now, just know that when it does unlock, Dejima's ability to craft quality swords will depend on his skill level. And to continue trying to increase that, you need to remember to use him to enhance either the sharpness or durability of your equipped swords every time you have enough materials available to do so. And right now you should have enough to at least make a couple of enhancements. As you do, you'll notice titles unlocking. For now, most titles will be at a lower level and really won't be worth wasting title books or sword slots on. However, if you've been collecting enough materials, you should have been able to enhance your sword to the point that unlocks the cutting title. If not, don't apply any titles until you eventually do get the cutting title unlocked. Once cutting is unlocked, apply it immediately. 
The condition is sharpness should be over 100 on your weapon, and that's one of the reasons why at the start of this guide I recommended enhancing the sharpness on your weapon first. If you've been doing that since the start of the game and collecting enough materials, you should have sharpness over 100 by this point. The cutting title increases orb gain by 60%. This is a major boost to how fast you will get katana time on that weapon, especially when paired with light mushrooms. In my view, this is an absolutely essential title and is the first one to go for and to put on any weapon you have. Depending on how lucky you've been with coin, you might still have plenty of coin left to buy a costume if you want one. You might want to save for now, and I recommend that's what you actually do, but if not, you can buy a new costume via the Outfits tab in the Akadama Clan shop. To actually wear the costume though, you'll have to head back into the smithy and go to your closet inside and change there. Costumes are purely visual though, you don't get any extra perks or any extra carrying capacity or anything like that, it's just for the look of your character. And with all that done, you should now be good to head back into the dungeon for another full run. Although before you do, if you've still got a bit of coin to spare, you may want to consider buying one or two Miracle Medicines. You can see there some insurance is sold out from another game I was playing, but I can tell you, Miracle Medicine is better than any of those insurances. With a couple in your item list, you'll be saved if you die, losing no items, no swords, and no progress, and needing no insurance. I recommend always having at least one, and preferably two or three Miracle Medicines in your inventory before you go into a dungeon. Now that you're in your second full run and your weapon is more powerful, and maybe you have an extra miracle medicine or two, you may want to try taking portals, mystery points, and danger floors when you find them. If you do, be aware that you also now have quests available which require you to visit specific floors to complete them. Before taking any portal, mystery, or danger entry, check to see that you don't have any quests on nearby floors. If you do, you'll have to take a standard entry to the next floor, or you'll almost certainly miss out on completing the quest. These types of entries can often skip multiple floors, so if you're unsure, I recommend not taking them and just taking a standard descent instead. If, however, you don't have any nearby quests that you might miss and you find a mystery point, I definitely recommend always taking the mystery point. It's random what you'll get, it's random where you'll end up, but there is a very high chance that each mystery point will take you to a treasure room where you'll find a ton of coins and a ton of materials. So definitely always worth taking the mystery point if you're not going to skip any quests by accident. At some point you'll come across the hidden village. First thing you'll want to do here is head to the general shop and browse the accessories tab for the snaplock purse. The snaplock purse increases your coin carrying capacity by 2,000 coins, meaning with just one purse you can carry 2,999 coins. Multiples of this item are essential, but for now, buy the one he has in stock. If by some chance he has more than that, which I've never seen, make sure you buy more. Ultimately, you're aiming to have at least two or three of these things. You can leave your snaplock purses in your inventory until you reach max 999 coin. Then go into your accessories and equip a single snaplock purse. Now you'll be able to pick up any coin that you previously couldn't up to 2999. Just repeat the same process after 2999 once you finally get another purse. Back at the Hidden Village, you can visit the rat at the rare find shack to sell your items for more coins and to free up inventory space. He can also have your lost gear if you've previously died, but he'll ask an arm and a leg for you to buy him back, so he's really only useful for lost items much, much later in the game. Next, you can visit the bony guy and pay him 100 coin to send swords directly to Dejima's inventory. If you have a bunch of decent quality swords, you should absolutely do this to both stock Dejima's inventory and to free up your inventory space. You can send the blunt swords too, so that you can smelt them at a later time. It's up to you whether you send a few swords or all of them, but sending it all is really the way to go in my mind, as it will instantly free up your inventory. Just make sure you don't need any of the swords you send for repairing your equipped weapons before you send them off. And if you're feeling confident you can try to kill everyone in the hidden village, they will drop some weapons that you can't get from anywhere else, but they're also quite tough, so I don't recommend trying this until you've had more time to level up. Providing you are fulfilling orders with high quality swords at a service rate of 150%, the moment you complete your second full dungeon run, you should see an alert that the goal has been achieved. This means Dejima's smithy has now hit booming business status and customers will now be flocking in and buying swords. Benny the deck collector will have also turned up and you can make your first payment to him. 
You'll have more than enough money for this payment and you'll already have enough money for his next payment too, though you'll have to wait until the next payment is due to be able to pay it. Next, you'll also want to transfer all the swords from your inventory into Dejima's inventory to make sure that he has enough swords to sell to all the new customers that are flocking in. Speak to Dejima and he'll tell you he doesn't have enough swords. Crafting and smelting will now be unlocked. Once Dejima's making swords dialogue is done, go into Dejima's smelt option and smelt every blunt weapon in his inventory. Also smelt any weapons with negative status effects that hurt the user. You can use the materials to craft more swords in a moment, but before you do, make sure you enhance your main equipped sword with the materials that you have. If you don't do that now, you might end up wasting materials that you need to upgrade your sword with later, and then be stuck with your sword at its current level. Remember, enhancing enhances his skill, so it is better to do that first. Now head to the furnace and click Make Swords. Dojima's skill level should be at 3 at this point. That means you can craft swords of a 3 skill or quality level. Craft as many skill level 3s as you can. If you select any of the question mark swords, which are unnamed swords, their name will become known upon crafting. And since you're at booming business level of demand, be sure to craft as many swords as you can, working down from skill level 3 first, through to skill level 2, and finally skill level 1s with whatever materials are left. If you have a look at the bulletin board, you'll see that Smithy Tension, which is the satisfaction rating, has gone up. Previously the rating was okay, and now you can see for me, the Kurofo and Akadama factions have moved up to Satisfied. The change between okay and Satisfied now means those factions' shops will be selling some extra gear that they didn't have before. Just remember, Katana Kami is procedural. The factions that you have moved to Satisfied may be different, but you should still have at least one, and likely two, now Satisfied as well. If the Kurofu family is satisfied, you can likely now buy an extra fashion expansion to get an extra accessory slot. Here the Kurofu family is still only at okay for me, so I don't have that available. For me, the Akadama clan is at satisfied, which means their inventory will now include some new things, one of which is a snaplock purse for carrying more coin. Buy at least one or buy out every single one of those if you have them available to you too, as you'll almost certainly make use of them all later. Anyway, that's the main thing at this point to grab. I'll leave it up to you to check out anything else of interest in what is available to you. As long as you keep delivering high quality swords with 150% delivery rate, and as long as you keep stockpiling quality swords from the dungeon, as well as keep Dejima's stress levels down while continuing to craft swords and enhance your weapons, and sending high quality gifts, you'll be able to keep your booming business going and pay back Benyar's debt easily. You can see the coin going up like crazy already here, and we've hardly done any dungeon runs at all. Here's day 7, which is the very next day after one more dungeon run, and you can see Smithy Satisfaction continues to go up and our coins continue to skyrocket. If you want to start some fights to get tension going at this point, feel free, but as far as this guide goes, we've covered absolutely everything necessary to get you going and succeeding at the game. The only extra thing I'll say is don't think this is it. You haven't seen it all yet. There's more to come in the game that you haven't seen, you've still got to solve a bunch of mysteries, you still have to get Nanami back and after all that, there may even be more weapons, bosses and even more dungeons to discover. I hope this guide helps you enjoy the game as much as I do as you unravel all that Katana Kami has to offer. I'm Fuzzy Barbarian, thanks for watching and bye for now.